Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Today, I will discuss four topics, maybe five, while I'll be visiting Michigan State University. Beautiful campus. I will also give you some personal information on me, uh, associated with uh, Michigan State University. Yes, I am a Michigan State University alumni. And here is the Breslin Center. Let's start with that one before I'm introducing you to the topics. This is the Breslin Center where the basketball team plays. Behind over there, there is the Spartan Stadium where the football team plays. This is a great, great campus. I will tell you why and why did I pick this place to make this video. So let me read the four topics that I will discuss for you. Here, the first one. Elon Musk says it would be pointless to assassinate Kamala Harris or Joe Biden. And he's gonna give us the reason. Second one, Elon Musk and Tucker Carson laugh over idea of Kamala Harris assassination. Next, if Trump loses, I'm fucked, says Elon Musk. Why, why do you think so? Well, look at what happened to the Telegram, uh, Mr. Durov and others and I've been waiting for something like this to happen unless he cooperates. The other one, Trump, coming from CNN, Trump suggests undocumented immigrants, that is not people that are just found on the street that they don't have a driver's license. They call it undocumented, which are, you know, legally, no, they trespassed. Immigrants who commit murder have, and I'm quoting, bad genes. And then we have if you're dumb enough in this society of meritocracy, uh, you get promoted. First time when I saw this in the United States of America was, was when Condoleezza Rice, then the, what? The, I can't remember what position she had. Uh, security, uh, um, I can't remember her status under the nine, in 2001 when those attacks on September 11 occurred. She was promoted, she was promoted. So it was um, Condoleezza Rice, instead of being fired, she was promoted for a failure, I would say. So the same thing with uh, Karen Jean-Pierre, which is the baboonish uh, spokesperson, White House spokesperson, not spokeswoman, spokesperson, and she's French, Karen Jean-Pierre, okay? And she gets promoted as, I will tell you, senior advisor. Can you believe that? So that person with not much in her head, uh, is gonna be promoted to senior advisor position. I know, I know, uh, once uh, this guy is gonna be kicked out of the office, she's gonna be probably appointed somewhere else by Kamala Harris. She fits all the victimhood points. And the last one is Karine Jean-Pierre leaves briefing after Fox News Dossi questions Lebanon funding during hurricane season. So she just leaves and she wants to be an advisor. Uh, so why? Because she can't answer that question unless she's gonna probably lie. And the other one, I don't know if you're gonna get to that point, has to do with Kathy Bates, who tells us what her mom told her when she won an Oscar. And I think that's correct. That's the right, the right um, appreciation of the Oscars. So let's start with Michigan State University. Well, Michigan State University used to have about 52,000 students. This is how many people uh, graduated, I mean, at least attended. Not graduated, because you can attend, but then you don't graduate. And uh, it's a beautiful campus, big campus. Why did I pick this one? Because it's a beautiful day, and you're gonna see a lot of young people around and walking or riding their bikes, going to classes. This is Red Cedar. We're going to cross it multiple uh, times. And we're gonna sit on a bench next to a little waterfall that I used to, uh, I mean, I like to uh, sit by it and uh, watch people in general because you learn a lot by watching people's behaviors when they think they're not watched. Not watch them like uh, a person that I know. I will tell you the story later about that guy. Uh, he uh, used to be an engineer. Um, but anyway, let's go with me here. So I graduate Michigan State University. I did it in, three years and a half, the whole thing. Uh, I think it was three years and a half or three years. I can even remember, but something like that. When in the United States of America, the average, the average 
uh, graduation is about time is about uh, six years or something six years and a half so you stay here and uh, <laughs> don't talk <laughs> hey how are you Going to training? Yeah. <laughs> good. Good luck. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Oh, well, see, unexpectedly uh, met someone I know here. And uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, it's si about six years and a half. The That's a hawk just flying over right there. So six, six and a half years, I think it was the average graduation time. And uh, I graduated with uh, with a GPA of 3.92. That is, I was in the Dean's list all the time. I graduated with uh, summa cum laude. And then uh, I was in the president's list. I had dinner with the then president of Michigan State University. So I did it in three years and a half and I paid everything that I owed this school. I didn't expect any handouts, I didn't ask because they didn't come to this country to ask for anything but opportunities. And let me go and work, let me go and study, don't discriminate against me, unless I'm a dumbass. Then you say, sorry, we can't hire you because you're a dumbass. All right, so that's about it with Michigan State University. Whew, a lot of things were built in the meantime here. It's beautiful, it's, it's, it's located in uh, East Lansing, so East of Lansing, it's a little town. Uh, I think the Michigan, uh, Michigan State University as a surface is much bigger than even the, Lansing, uh, the East Lansing as a city or whatever it is. Nevertheless, beautiful East Lansing, beautiful um, campus. All right, so let's start with the first beautiful um, topic. I come here very often walking or riding my bike and uh, let me tell you uh, before about that engineer guy i'm not gonna mention his name just his initials Her initials were uh, uh, j no g g m and when he was an engineer he told me that he would like to come and be a uh, here a professor one day at michigan state university so he can uh, be around young uh, you know he was a, and still is, a pervert. I met him on two or three occasions in, in here because he fulfilled his dream of a pervert. Now, I'm not doing that while I'm here, but it's a, it's like you are in a, uh, how do you call that? Um, resort. That's how it feels when you go around here. All right, so let's go with the first, with the first topic. I have this little sissy phone here. This comes from the Rolling Stones, and this is the title. Elon Musk says it would be pointless, quote-unquote, to assassinate Kamala Harris or Joe Biden. Where, why would he say that? Okay, first, you try to answer that on your own, and then I will give you Elon Musk's um, uh, answer. And I think the answer is the same as mine, as I uh, mentioned it many, many times before. One. Let me pull back my goggles, because I can see I'm old. The point is, they're gonna replace with, with whom? With another piece of shit. But that's my assessment, and let me read this for you. Now that I have my uh, goggles, obviously. Where did I put my phone? <laughs> Old, can you tell? All right, let's see, baby doll, what do we have here? Face IDs and all that. So it says here, Elon Musk, the world's richest man and Donald Trump's most pathetic supporter, hands down, joked on Monday about the prospect of someone assassinating Vice President Kamala Harris or President Joe Biden. No, 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 no. That's, you know, pointless and I hope nobody does even try. Speaking with conservative pundit Tucker Carson, Musk referred, uh, re referenced a post he had previously made on X, the platform he owns. Uh, he's got 20% ownership of that shares but he owns it how about the rest of them all right and wisely wisely deleted so what did he say and i'm quoting mr elon musk right now i made a joke which i realized i deleted which was like nobody's even bothering to try 
to uh, 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 Kamala because it's pointless, end quote. Musk said, and I'm quoting again Musk. What do you achieve? He continues suggesting the vice president would be replaced by another puppet. Quote unquote, he added, and I'm quoting, nobody's trying to Joe Biden, it would be pointless. So what do you think? Here, this is a Spartan. That's a well-known, famous, uh, this is a copy of the original, which is made out of terracotta. And this is placed, I think, in the stadium over there. But this is where people, when they graduate, they take pictures with the families, so everybody's happy, tra la la lulu And an excellent location here. I'm gonna pass by the stadium over there. All uh, right, never attended a game over there, why? I will tell you maybe later. So yeah, it will be pointless because I think the system doesn't really matter what kind of baboon has in place, as long as the baboon is vetted. Next one, this, is, comes, this comes from Huffington Post and it says, Elon Musk and Tucker Carson laugh over idea of Kamala Harris assassination. Again, this is baboonish, right? And the same thing, I made a joke, pop, 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 the same thing these guys are talking. Well, that's a bad, how should I say, a bad view for a system that hails itself as being the most democratic and the best and all that. Let's go to the next uh, topic, which is coming from Russia Today. And this is what Elon Musk says, according to Russia Today, obviously, from October 8, 2024. The Tesla and SpaceX boss has joked that he'll be arrested if Democratic nominee Kamala Harris becomes president. And this is the title. If Trump loses, I'm fucked. End quote. According to Musk. What do you think? Well, I think even if uh, Donald Trump gets elected or whatever, gets in power, <laughs> power with, with quotation marks, obviously, he's not going to... Uh, uh, stop the intelligence services or whomever is over there to arrest him with uh, appropriate documents. He's going to be arrested you know, with a warrant and I made this claim many many times before. These guys can have 100 judges if they want to sign a uh, warrant. I got many friends it seems like around here but anyway and uh, there will be a lot of people who would write that and he's gonna go and he's gonna be dragged left and right he's gonna be just taken to the police department or fbi and gonna be quote-unquote interviewed by these guys and i guarantee you he's gonna get the message why what are you gonna do you got the money do you have an army no you lost already you don't have an army you lost you can have the money the same thing with the guys in charge of us. They're only two. They have the money and they have the organizations and the, uh, no, the contacts. But if the military wants, or in this case, the intelligence services wants, want, you are toast. You are toast. They come over with everything legal. And they will press some charges and then you're going to be arrested and kept for the safety of the world. I don't know, somewhere like Guantanamo Bay. Why? Because they can. You don't think that's, that's possible? Look what they do to Trump. This is just a warning, not only for Trump, but for the people like Trump. That's why Elon Musk now says, well, they're going to do this to me. Where are you going to go, uh, Elon Musk, the stadium? Where are you going to go? To South Africa? Are you going to go to Russia? These guys will, will confiscate, your, freeze your assets, your money, and they will uh, make sure that you will never have any possibility of coming back here. Not that you ne ne necessarily need to be here in States of America, but they will make sure you are toast. So I'm driving, I'm, dri <laughs> I'm driving, I'm uh, running. I'm walking along Red Cedar. Now it's very, very shallow. Salmon come up stream. When I used to be here a student, I went over that bridge that I'm going to cross and I saw three salmon in the water going up on the sandy bottom. It's a dirty river, but hey, they're coming upstream somehow. Why is it dirty? You see bicycles, you see uh, all kind of uh, cars, you see garbage in here, but I don't know how good the water is. They still come up and they die here uh, after they spawn. So uh, where is uh, Mr. Uh, Elon Musk gonna go? They're gonna get him and one night with all the papers and he's going to be talked to. Uh, that brings me to a... Uh, to a uh, personal story about my grandfather. Uh, my grandfather yeah. was born in the United States of America 
and uh, unfortunately he uh, was in Romania and the communists went one night to his house and they uh, grabbed him and the family did not know anything about him for about two weeks between two and three weeks and they thought they you know it was that time when they were purging the intellectuals uh, the Romanians from uh, the positions of power let's put it this way so he had uh, this little problem he was released he was taken in the middle of the night in um, an evening with his uh, bottom shirt and brought back in the same clothes so this is where I saw the salmon in that water down there over there is the waterfall the little waterfall that I'm going to go around I want to sit down on that little lawn that I always do when I ride my bike in front of me is the bicycle behind bicycle Jesus Christ the library and behind me is the stadium so I'm gonna turn around a lot of studying in that library now that's a civilized library beautiful beautiful which way okay let's go to the library I can't get in I don't have a Michigan State University student or uh, how do you call it? staff badge so Elon Musk will be talked and even if Trump comes and uh, will be in charge in charge of being named if he's allowed to be named, you know, uh, the president of the United States of America. Uh, if these guys want to take care of him, they will definitely take care of him. In a way of, opa, we got some political uh, activists here. So this is the part of the library. On the last, up there you see those, where, is, uh, where are the bricks, right there? That's one of the places where I used to stay and study watching this beautiful uh, scenery. And here is the computer room, been over there as well right there and in that building over there uh, and that one over there next to it an old building right there that one i had one of my my favorite classes with professor melzer uh he was a political uh philosopher or at least i took a class of uh, uh, political philosophy and that was fantastic he is one of the three teachers professors uh, that I respect or admire, especially. Uh, there are two more. The other one was a mathematics teacher when I was in the class in the 5-8 uh, in school. And the other one was my 1-8. Um, to eight. The rest, not really, but nevertheless, that was he was fantastic. So I'm approaching, so I'm walking along the red cedar. Here is the Hannah how's that called Hanna administrative building which is where you pick up your diploma and I don't know you make payments uh, for whatever uh, you make payments for they administrate you so yes Elon Musk uh, and Donald Trump uh, if they're not cooperating even if they're not on someone's payroll payroll they will just play ball otherwise they will I, I, it's so easy my friends it's so easy okay let's go to the next topic let's next topic let's see where are we all right and let me read you the article with uh, with Elon Musk I'm, uh, I'm getting to the waterfall and a little lawn here meadow people just sit down and watch the waterfall on the left side right here are some benches I always sit on them stay over there and this is the water I'm gonna go to the to the waterfall in a minute in the meantime let me just sit down here uh, this is Hannah administrative building oh, all right this is what he said the Tesla and SpaceX boss has joked that he'll be arrested if Democratic nominee Harris becomes president it's not up to Harris it's up to the guys behind Harris tech mogul Elon Musk has told American journalist Tucker Carlson that he is all in on Donald Trump winning the US presidential election in November the billionaire sat down with Carson for a full-length interview published on Monday on Musk's ex formerly Twitter platform uh, network Carson began the interview by reckon by theorizing that what would happen if Democrats nominee Kamala Harris beats Republican rival Trump in November and I'm quoting Elon Musk if he loses you are fucked dude, dude Carson said prompting both men to burst into laughter 
laughter. And I'm quoting now Elon Musk. Now, if he loses, I'm fucked, Musk, Musk agreed, adding, how long do you think my prison sentence is going to be? Will I see my children? I don't know. So what do you think? Let's go back towards the waterfall here. Now we're gonna to go to the next uh, topic, which is coming from CNN. Trump suggests undocumented immigrants who commit murder have quote unquote bad genes. Now let's say right now, let's say I don't have an ID, an ID with me. Police officer stops me. Am I documented or undocumented? Obviously I'm undocumented, but I'm legal. You know what I mean? So if I've given them my name and my uh, driver's license, which I know by heart, or my date of birth, they are finding me in the system. So that means I'm legal, but I'm undocumented. I don't have the documents on me. He can't document who the hell I am unless I give them my name and all that. So about bad genes, this guy says. So are there good genes and bad genes? You have to agree with that one first. Sometimes I come with my kayak from there and yuppie, 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 going down here. But not now, it's very shallow. Many, many... Uh, rocks over there people stay read interact with one another this is a beautiful civilized clean place I should say I should look around before I say that but no it is clean it is clean not because necessarily these guys keep it clean the people who clean they're paid for the, to do that all right let's move up upstream so let's see what Trump said about the undocumented immigrants who commit crimes. Former President Donald Trump on Monday suggested, suggested that undocumented immigrants who commit murder have quote unquote bad genes. In the latest example of the former president using the humanizing rhetoric as he tries to stoke fears about those in the country illegally. Well, if there's no bad gene, there's no good gene. Now I know from epigenetics that you know, gene, genes are affected by our behavior, by our preferences, by our food, by our whatever we read, whatever, let's say, I'm a man uh, very much about justice and, uh, and uh, truth. Now, they claim through epigenetics that if I am, you know, talking about this, feeling about it, something changes with me and when I, uh, 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 and I have offspring, they will likely be like me. That's why they say, well, they're just like their parents. They act like them, they behave like them. Some of them, sometimes it doesn't work that way. Why? Because the genes are not necessarily or always coming from the first generation. Sometimes they come from the second, third, fourth. So from a bad uncle, I'm not bad, it's a bad uh, uh, word. I like this, this kind of, uh, tree and I like the color I like this kind of green we'll call it crude crude green verde crude it's a fir tree very soft all right so what this guy said he said in a radio interview in the Hugh Hewitt show Trump again distorted statistics on immigration and crime to attack vice president pa -pa -pa -bi 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 -bi. and he says uh, you know and I'm calling Donald Trump you know, now a murderer, I believe this, it's in their genes and we got bad, a lot of bad genes in our country right now, end quote, Trump said. So what do you think about that one? I mean, if we uh, follow the science, uh, I'm not saying there's bad genes, but definitely people's actions uh, affect. And as I said before, just do and uh, study epigenetics a little bit. There are certain things we're not supposed to talk about because they will look bad on their equity garbage and we all the same thing. And they will not definitely talk about it. Why? It doesn't play in their political scheme. I think we know much, I mean, a lot about the genes and uh, uh, DNA, the human DNA, but I don't think that's allowed to be uh, revealed to the public for political reasons. All right, so let's see one, one person with the good genes, which is this French... Karin Rampier, who is <laughs> um, the White House spokesperson, because I don't know if she identifies as a woman, so we have to respect that, right? Uh, no. So what do we have here? ABC News. White House Press Secretary Karin Jean-Pierre promoted to senior advisor. Can you believe that? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. You fuck up, you're gonna be promoted. 
but it's meritocracy. And I'm right here with students all around, and these guys are thought that garbage. And when they get over there and they don't kiss the right ass, they realize how much their diploma is worth. But hey, it's good to be idealistic and, you know, live your life, make mistakes, be from time to time and succeed. Or just the hope that the government will give you someone else's money. Uh, yeah, because I can pay for it. For my bad, bad decisions, I'm not punished. No, I'm rewarded by having some other people who took care of that paying for my studies. Great. So let's see how she was promoted. White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre has been promoted to senior advisor to the president ABC News has learned. Can you believe that? Karine has been a trusted advisor, so that's what matters, loyalty, to the president and all of us here at the White House since day one. She shouldn't have been there in a real America that we are teaching our children now, because it's a big uh, dissonance or between what we teach our children that they can be when they grow up and what actually they are doing out there. But that's a way of controlling people. Like, you know, you be nice, you follow the rules, don't break the laws, it's okay. They, the ones that tell you not to do it, they will do it big time. And then they say, well, what do you want, man? Well, I was just lucky, I guess. So her counsel will be critical to get as much done as possible for the American people, I mean, for me. In the coming months, said Jeff Zins, the president's chief of staff. Jeff Zins is Jewish, did you know that? Not that it matters, but hey, Blinken is Jewish. Hey, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's all right, it's all right. The prime minister, uh, the prime minister, the foreign minister of France, isn't he? No, the prime minister, what's his name? The young 36 year old Fralala with his boyfriend and so on. But it's okay, these guys are okay. The Mr. Shops, the defense minister of Great Britain, eh, Zelensky with his club over there on top of the Ukrainian nation. It's just a coincidence, I'm pretty sure. But if that's a coincidence, how come you don't see Romanians? You can't say we're dumb. Why? Because that would make you a racist or xenophobic and all that. So something is not right, isn't it? All right, so this is with Karin Jean-Pierre. Eh, she got promoted. Now, I'm not saying this kind of things about her. This is a bicycle shop. So this is operated by uh, students. I think, and uh, they get the leftovers of the bikes that people don't get them home with them. They put them, impound them in a police, uh, Michigan State Police Department, and these guys take from time to time, they fix them, and then they put them here for sale. And now the price is very expensive. Why? Because not uh, that's the way it's really worth this kind of bicycles, but because they know the students, some of them have a lot of money and they can just squeeze their parents of that money. So I think this is uh, bad. The same thing with misinformation and disinformation. They know those bikes are not worth how much they ask for. But they say, well, that's free, free to choose, right? Free to choose. Uh, therefore, uh, if they pay for it, but hey, in the first place, you're a baboon. You're a piece of shit because you ask a certain, oh, we got a little, uh, get out. All right, we got a little, uh, how do you call this? You can see it on my hand. How do you call that? Spider. Let's go, spider, go home. <coughs> there you go, go to mommy. All right, see how nice I was? Well, okay, so I'm not against Karine Jean-Pierre because she, you know, I don't like her for whatever looks or whatever she, the position. I don't think her intelligence, based on her statements, her demeanor, the way she talks, the way she uh, argues uh, and she explains she's a spokesperson, um, revealed that she's a uh, really unintelligent and not un not necessarily unintelligent, but lacks knowledge. But she's over there to explain. And she's running away whenever she's asked a question that she's supposed to answer. Why? Because she has to explain. That's her job. But somehow she's just running away. Now, let me show you a little building here. I think this is the education uh, department. Uh, let me cross the little bridge here. This is new. This is the education department. And this little building in there, that's an amphitheater. I met Norman Finkelstein in there. I have a picture with him and pretty soon I, pretty soon I will uh, invite him in this program on my channel. We have a lot of things to talk about. Norman Finkelstein, remember. All right, so this is a beautiful amphitheater. So Karine Jean-Pierre, like for instance, Annalena Baerbock, another baboon, 
um, from Germany, foreign minister. It's not that I don't like them because, uh, as I said, something wrong with their appearance or no, I don't like because I don't like them because I think their level of intelligence, their level of knowledge, don't match the position they are in. One is a foreign minister, the other one is a spokesperson. And now she's gonna be a senior, not a, not a junior, senior, senior like like uh, Kushner. Remember when Kushner, uh, Trump's son-in-law was appointed as a senior advisor uh, of the White House with the Middle East? Why, just because he's Jewish? Or just because you were, uh, what, uh, my son-in-law? Now, that's a mafia thing. I disagree with that one too. So the same, I saw these guys talk, I saw them argue, I saw how much they they think how they think and how much they know in their statements so that's a disgrace that this person is promoted to a senior advisor why because she's gonna have that on her resume and i guarantee you guarantee you that sometime in the future you're gonna hear from her and you're gonna hear from her being somewhere up because she's already a senior advisor now consider her for instance with uh, um what's his name uh other seniors, uh, uh, senior advisors of the president. And I'll give you one name. That's, um, I read his book, what the hell, Demo uh, Diplomacy, Henry Kissinger. Now he was an, a senior advisor, uh, uh, na uh, national security senior advisor. Uh, I think under uh, Ford was he? He was under Nixon as well. But remember, uh, this guy was a secretary of state and then an advisor. Now you put Kissinger, if you know anything about the guy, then you understand the difference between the, the, the position of senior advisor. It is, this is, and then I'm supposed to say, yes, that's fine, I love what's going on. I'm gonna just follow the rules and I'm gonna be around and I accept them. No, I understand what's going on. And it is based on who you know, whose ass you lick and how loyal you are with whomever, you know, is gonna make sure that's gonna give you the job later. All right, so let's go to the last, I mean, not the last, because I'm gonna go over the, whatever is it, Kathy Bates or whatever her name is. So White House Pre Press Secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre promoted. Good for her, I guess, right? No, 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 that destroys all the meaning of hard work and diligence and sacrifice on this country. Karine Jean-Pierre leaves briefing after Dosi, Dusi questions Lebanon funding during hurricane, hurricane season. So this is according to Fox News right there. Trapalapa. She says, uh, White House Press Secretary, uh, uh, now a uh, uh, senior advisor, you have to be able to answer questions if you're smart, knowledgeable, but she runs away. Why? I'm not gonna talk this with you, but that's, that's, that's exactly why you are over there in um, the position of a spokesperson. You are supposed to tell the media, uh, answer the questions or say, I don't know. I come back to your, uh, another baboon, uh, Jen Psaki used to say, I circle back to you. Well, say, I'm circling back to you. And I don't know at this point. I can't brief you. But she just leaves. Let's see. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre got into a heated exchange with Fox News Channel's Peter Ducey after White House sending aid to Lebanon during the hurricane season, which has had devastating effects on North Carolina. Harris pledged Saturday to send $157 million to Lebanon for that. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure if they would ask about the military aid they give, Israel, I think she would have stayed over there and she would have leaked ass right there in front of the cameras. So again, uh, that tells you, uh, this, this is a, a supposition, okay? I just think it's like that. It's not like that whatsoever. These are the guys in charge of us. These are the guys, she made $185,000 on her position, if I remember correctly, as a uh, White House spokesperson. Now I'm on the other side of the river, of the uh, waterfall right now. I was over there on that little lawn right now i'm here where people we saw them from the other side i'm not gonna go down there and disturb their uh studying i mean uh texting <laughs> but hey they can do it mommy and daddy pays and then you and i will pay when uh, biden decides to take our money uh indirectly and give it to people who made bad decisions in life therefore somehow we have to pay let me go by the uh stadium a little bit let's go to the last um, topic which is coming from let me put my uh, goggles on Woo are you okay are you okay buddy you okay buddy all right it's nice that look see in uh, in here they have from time to time uh, when you have a tree 
they have a little mark over there they have and they tell you what kind of tree it is and it says uh, Hinoki Cypress this is Japan tall tree of moist mountain forest forest where native it attains heights to 40 meters then multiply by three you got in uh, uh, feet recognized by the combination of reddish brown bark peeling pop, pop, pop. So this is from Japan I love Japan I always love Japan right there seems like that branch is dying but I think this is not this is not a bonsai kind type of pine they're just different there they have here in uh, Michigan State University as well so let's see look at the last article the last uh, title last topic Kathy Bates won an Oscar and her mom told her and I'm quoting you didn't discover the cure of for cancer and quote so I don't know what all the excitement is about and she's right is right this is the uh, something like that this is it and behind me is uh, Spartan Stadium so when I won an Oscar the Oscar for a misery my mother said and I'm putting I don't know what all the excitement is about you didn't discover the cure for cancer well let's start with uh, Hollywood I think Hollywood is owned and controlled by some bad people bad actors and not actors like in the movies bad actors the ones that provide you know the directors the, the uh, every time I every time I watch a movie I used to watch a movie and then I, I stopped for this one of the reasons uh, is looking at the, not necessarily at the director or who the, the script writers I was looking at the guys who funded it and see who were the guys who funded it and you're gonna find all kind of Zelensky Steins most of the time or one of the two one of the three and that's okay but you understand that without that kind of inclination uh, you will not get a job as an actor but remember it was um, what's his name Marlon Brando showed up at uh, Larry King show a long time ago in the 80s I think or maybe something like that or three three years before he died or something like that it might be 1990 one or 993 or something like that that I mean he said well uh, Hollywood is owned by the they are uh, you don't do anything about it without the do, 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 do. okay that's what he said and then uh, after two three days he apologized why <laughs> well he was a non actor at that time for some time already but why do you have to apologize he got some martinis in in him at that time I have no idea but nevertheless so this Hollywood thing is like you have a little club that took over look at I'm riding I'm riding I'm walking right with the Sun so I'm gonna go like this until this big sign with the Spartan these are not Spartans here these are not Spartans not Spartans by any means they forgot what Spartan was what Sparta was they forgot about a, a hockey right there this is left right entrance gates pop up so I think uh, they made a little organizations organization I they started early the Americans they were conquered with money by some bad actors as I said and they are promoting garbage and not only garbage they are just uh, uh, building more stereotypes and uh, guilt for the Americans to hate one another and love whomever these guys decide should be loved or lusted for these guys they uh, uh, conflate love is love with actually lust is lust but what can you do the baboons don't even know because you go to school and you graduate with no knowledge whatsoever I considered and this is not bashing Michigan State University but bashing uh, the American uh, educational system I went to college to Romania so I can compare uh, for me this was high school there was a level high school well, I studied, I read about two or two, three times uh, whatever I was supposed to, and then I had multiple choice questions or uh, true or false questions. What the hell is that? I've never had that in my life. In my life. <laughs> I had that in college here. That was embarrassing. That's the easiest way of um, um, retrieving knowledge or information. The easiest way. Instead of asking, asking you, who said that? 
Well, you gotta remember the name. Instead of saying, who said that, Gigi or Mikey? They're already one of them, and it must be one, not two at the same time, you know, in, in certain situations. So that's what it is. This is with the people. So I'm gonna go again around this building. Here they have a uh, sport. They have used to have uh, swimming. They used to have other things here. They squash. Now probably have pick a ball, whatever that's pick a ball, whatever it is right now. On the other side is the Moon Arena, where I, I'm in a, in a winter now because they closed in the summer. I go uh, speed skating. That's a, one of my favorite locations. Probably I'm gonna go around there. So let's talk about Hollywood. So they are building all kind of clubs, all kind of institutes. And for instance, when I came here, I said, well, Dance Academy. When I came from uh, Romania, an academy uh, was something the Romanian academicians. But that means these guys were PhDs, were well known people with a lot of knowledge. Here, Dance Academy, and you see a little shack with five kids over there rolling around, not doing squat. It's like an academy. So they down, they diluted. I don't know if you can hear me because the wind comes, but it comes from that, so it should be blocked. Uh, I was blocked before, like a retard. Uh, so they, they diluted the academy and the gymnasium, things that were done by Aristotle and Plato. Remember, these are good stuff. Why? Because now we have the Torah or whatever we have. Here is the entrance to the stadium. Big. Big. So they create this kind of institutions. And if you want to read a, an interesting book, very, very well written. I know, I know, it's politically incorrect. Uh, read uh, Kevin McDonald's book, Doctor or Professor Kevin McDonald's. He's, um, he wrote The Culture of Critique. I read it and I intend to speak with that uh, fantastic professor uh, one day, if I'm allowed to, and uh, talk about these things. He tells you in that book uh, how certain groups form certain institutions and then they give one another from the group they give one another um, titles and then when you talk about let's say you talk about uh, someone who won the Pulitzer Prize that person who won the Pulitzer Prize or that the Pulitzer Prize used to be something now there's nothing you have baboons baboons having Pulitzer Prizes and so on why they make it that so then when someone's gonna show up and say, hey, Mr. Emil Kosman came over here and he is a Pulitzer Prize, Prizer winner, blah, 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 blah. Everybody's gonna say, oh my God, Pulitzer Prize, or I don't know, uh, Goldsberg Prize or something, like an award. They make all kind of awards. The same thing with, with this. I look at the actors. I look to see how they act. I don't look, okay, this is Oscars and they give me, all right, this is the greatest, uh, won an Oscar. For what, for sucking something? I mean, and then you have Weinsteins and others in the area that are shush, shush, don't talk about it. Oh my God. But some, somehow Mr. Epstein, uh, you know, decided to do something, but Mr. Weinstein, not yet. These are uh, red pines. I love red pines. It's a little forest here. And it's uh, uh, next to the Moon Arena uh, uh, as well. And this is the stadium behind. So the red pines are red. Right? I don't know if you can see it. Uh, you can see the, where the light goes, but I guess you can see on those things over there. They're red. And apart from another. And that's Moon Arena, the ice skating rink where they have hockey playing and uh, me ice skating over there. All right, my friends, this is it. Um, Trump says certain things. I think he should be allowed to say certain things. Of course, we should be allowed to um, uh, analyze those things uh, freely. We should use the words that we feel like without being afraid of using certain uh, uh, words. All this should be free. Now, sometimes you hurt someone's feelings. Sometimes your feelings are hurt. It doesn't really matter when you talk about the truth. That's why when I see in front of the houses, uh, we believe that uh, being kind or something like this. Well, that's nice to be kind, but these guys, none in, the, in that list. No human is illegal. No, they have that garbage in front of the houses. Now, my question is this, none in that is, I am for truth. I am from power. 
No, I'm for justice. No, they don't talk that. Well, they don't talk about that. They give me the kind. All right, just so you know, and I said this many, many times before, that's the stadium. I rather way, way ahead of being kind, maybe you can tell, uh, I'd rather be <laughs> truthful and just, not kind. Kind comes about, I don't know, 150 place in my value box or behavior. Um, I'm neutral, that's how I am. You know, that's ex that expression, uh, you know, you're a fool if you don't, uh, uh, not nice. But I'm not saying not to be nice, but I take people the way they are, average, not dirty of anything, not, not stained with anything. I let them prove who they are through our direct interaction. And then I make my decision how I'm going to behave in the future versus this person. Maybe I choose to love that person. But remember that saying, I fight only for what I love. This is right, uh, right, uh, Red Pines as well. That's Moon Arena, the hockey. It is the Red Pines. So, I fight for what I love. I love only what I respect. And in order to respect, at least, you need to have some knowledge about the subject. So, the same here, my friends. In order to have a little assessment of someone, you have to know, or something. You will possibly never know everything about everything. I mean, uh, every situation. You learn, you learn, you know about things, how much you can. But sometimes there are things that you know everything about. Everything about. But sometimes, no, you, let's say you, Look at the brick and you read about the brick and it's a lot to know about the brick. But then it's an ending. You can reach that ending if you read about it. That's why you, you could possibly know everything about a brick. All right? Could possible. But about people, about situations, about geopolitics, things are fluid. They change. Yeah, like I'm uh, you know, gender fluid. Uh, <laughs> no, the things are fluid. I love this. I love this, man. Look at this. Look at that. God. And here is an old building, and you can smell. I know you. I, some of you, I'm, I know uh, that you know what I'm talking about. You feel like the ages. Some of us have that connection with the past. Some people, oh my God, ah, ooh, ooh, and that's too. Like this. Well, smell coming from these old windows old windows metal now so yeah but it doesn't mean oh let's go in here oops ding, 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 dong. i played here some time a long time ago some soccer what is this like the flag great job i hope the uh, heart is also not only the flag there are the stands stands up here Nice, this is all right. Let's go out. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad I was able to go in here. And Elvis has left the building. Now, the same, it doesn't mean you should not talk about things, but always, always be reserved. Uh, that is, uh, don't say, don't say it's always like this, like I just said, but. This applies, always be reserved, unless you know that's everything that you, you know about it. Uh, and as I said, that's rarely happening. Visitor information, military science, Department of Military Science over there. That's gonna get me to the Breslin Center on that area. So leave, leave room for, I think, no, I assess, but don't, be, don't talk in absolute terms. You always do that. She never does that, or things like this. That's rarely, rarely uh, accurate. Why? Because things change. You get more information. And when you get more information, you might change your uh, stance, your opinion, your assessment. So, and that's true, that's true. But it, it doesn't mean you should not speak out and speak up in the same time. I'm gonna just stop the video uh, when I go in front of the Breslin Center because I can't take my hand this beautiful little piece of woods here, a forest with red pine.
They were specifically saved. You can see it in the old uh, pictures. They're still here, this forest, but this forest came from that side by the stadium, crossed the street. They were not street over there, this way, and used to go that way. So that, that's where I met that person that said, Shh, don't talk, they will know. They will know we're buddies. <laughs> anyway. What remains? Memories. Memories, my friends. Here is the Moon Arena. This is Breslin Center. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you didn't, sorry, uh, what can I say? Whatever I say, I say with passion and I believe in. I don't say it just to say it. I don't say it to insult uh, unnecessarily. So if I insult someone, too bad for you. But that's not my intention unless I let you know, you know, and you're going to find out, you're going to realize when I really want to say something that I really want to insult someone, which uh, sometimes I do. All right, my friends, thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.